Hello, pet parents, and welcome to another edition of Natural Pets TV. And this season, we have done something really special. We've listened to all of you. That's right, we're gonna be focusing some of our episodes on cats and some of our episodes on dogs. We know there's so much that you wanna know about each of these wonderful species that we have assembled experts that are gonna not only enlighten you, but take you into a deeper level than we've done before. So this is gonna be a great year of Natural Pets TV. We're gonna start off this episode with cats. And I am really excited by the experts that we have. We have Heidi Nevela, Dr. Liz Bales, and Dr. Ken Tudor. And I am really excited to talk about this topic because it's something as I have gone throughout the pet world that many people are confused about. And I'm gonna be interested to hear all of your opinions and views on it. I like to call it the systemic cat. In other words, when one system is under attack or maybe failing, it has an impact on other systems throughout the body. Where do you all stand on it? And I'm just gonna pick someone randomly, Dr. Liz Bales. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so I think you bring up a great point in just your introduction to the show that dogs and cats are very different. And when, when a person who's familiar with dogs thinks of a dog in distress or with a failing system, those signs can be pretty obvious or demonstrative. And then when we think about cats, we need to take a, a step back and realize that cats are a very stoic animal. And so they might not show you signs for a really long time, or that those signs would be very subtle for a long time. So any mild changes that you see, like not being as playful or not coming out to eat as often, or mild changes in, um, in diet or litter box habits are a sign that you, know, you might be, want to pay attention earlier rather than later before these things can add on to themselves like that. I think that's really important because cats, unfortunately, when they, a system is failing, they will shut down, if you will, and they will do more hiding. They will let themselves become even more debilitated. So it's so important to recognize symptoms early to keep that from happening because it's that death spiral we get into mm. at the, the end that is the problematic, in my, my opinion. And from an herbalist perspective, we have uh, probably a similar approach, maybe just different tools, but we uh, have a remedial or symptomatic response, which is common to all of us. But really the foundation of herbal medicine is root cause, which really isolating into what systems might be impacting. Um, typically with herbs, uh, it, conditionally in cats specific, like urinary tract infections or that, or crystals or stones, that kind of formation, there are go-to products, but if those are not responding or successful enough, then we move into other systems. Normally, they do well, but that's where the, the cat system gets a little more complicated. And, uh, and thankfully, in some of, these, some of the more prevailing issues, herbs do tend to be very successful in meeting those needs. Um, I'll give you an example, see if you want to weigh in if, uh, or tone in on this, but uh, we get probably for cats, the, the biggest request we get is for urinary tract infections or stones and crystals. And we have an herb called Chanca Pedra that is highly responsive. It's, uh, it's what I call, it's got a great anti-panel, it's an endolithic, it's antispasmodic. Uh, it will uh, reduce smooth muscle, go for bacterial, viral, fungal infections, microbial infections, anti-inflammatory, but the point is, if that does not uh, impede the cycle, then we move into central nervous system, neurotransmitters that might be failing, um, defective bladder tissue can be an issue related to inflammation. So that's the approach that we take an herbally or like a holistic approach, I should say. And then to, to build on that, um, particularly when it pertains to urinary issues and cats in general, mm -hmm. we, we find that the environment of, of the indoor environment for the cat has a lot to do with urinary issues in general. Right. And in so many uh, cases, particularly with humans, we want to say there's a straight line between the problem and the solution. Right. And in cats, so often we find that they don't have a lot of ways to exhibit mm -hmm. their distress or their problems. And so they kind of have a couple go-tos. They'll urinate or defecate outside the litter box. They'll vomit. They'll, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not really um, very specific to the specific problem. And um, in, in urinary issues in general, that could be tied back to a lack of an enriched environment. Right. And what a, what a cat perceives as, as stress from not having the, their indoor environment set up the way that 
makes them feel safe as a predator prey species. Um, it it kind of gets pretty swirly. There can yeah. be a lot of things going on. So some of them medical, some of them environmental, and it takes a lot of um, sorting out to try to figure out exactly where the root causes, as you say. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's why holistic uh, people are drawn to a holistic medicine for cats is because um, the, the Western notion of, of making a straight line diagnosis and treating specifically probably doesn't do well with them. We need to, to take into consideration these, these other things. And I think uh, t traditional Chinese medicine tries to, to mm -hmm. do that as well, where we're not looking at a specific problem, we're looking at a pattern, and then trying to put um, all of the energy uh, in, a, in a balance uh, so that we don't have this deleterious effects on other systems. And that's exactly right, because really the ultimately for, at least for herbs or plant and marine-based components is to restore balance in the body. And there are proactive things you could do in your home environment for you know, pet parents and for their, for their cats. Um, diet always comes up. I'm sure you talk about that all the time with your, with your pet parents. Um, moisture is important. That alone may reduce a lot of the problems. Um, limiting stress in the environment, that has a lot of effects too in terms of what it does in terms of meriting disease or maybe causing inflammation to set up the susceptibility. But um, so we, we look at all of those things too from an herbalist perspective. Uh, but absolutely, the end result is, okay, here's the condition, uh, whether it's uh, an allergen, like an, uh, ad we, have, we, we have a lot of repertoire, like a lot of herbs and repertoire that we use, but no matter what the presenting issue is, um, we've, we have go-to products that are specific to that body response, but then we draw it from there. And I, 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 I want to focus on something that you said, is it's hard to come up with a treatment plan if you don't have a diagnosis. Right. And I want to make right. that really clear right. to the right. viewer at home right. that particularly because cats, as I said earlier, can be very subtle in their signs, mm -hmm. having a visit with a veterinarian that you trust mm -hmm. and that you feel you can communicate well with and ask good questions of and that they can ask you the proper questions to be able to isolate what they should be looking for in your pet, that they do a good physical exam of physical exam of your cat mm -hmm. and try to get to the the root cause of the problem without a diagnosis it is difficult right. to provide proper care and as much as we want to take those things into our own hands in a loving way mm -hmm. with our pets we cannot discount the importance oh, of a yeah. veterinary visit to be able absolutely. to get to the root cause of the problem absolutely agree with you really when when people call us it's they've already done their due diligence and they they maybe even tried something um, that their vet recommended and, and maybe it allayed it but didn't disrupt it. And that's another area where um, South American herbs that I interact with and use are, can, be, can be really effective because they're adaptogenic. They actually, some, in some cases, not all cases, but in some cases the core uh, actions of the plants are to interrupt cycles. So the, like for instance, we're talking, we talk a lot about urinary tractor stones um, there's a plant chemical called geranium, and that's specific to breaking up um, antilithic situations. And it functions as a preventative, but we don't get those calls until the pet parent already thinks. We don't advise to self-medicate, or you know, if your cat's going outside of the litter box, you have to step back and think it may not specifically be UTI. It could be behavioral related to some stress in the home environment. And ideally, we want to create a situation where the pet parent and the veterinarian and alternative medicine are working together I and communicating perfect, right? <laughs> really well with records keeping mm -hmm. so that we're not um, overlapping a medication that mm -hmm. shouldn't overlap mm -hmm. um, because uh, herbs and medicine can cause uh, a, some effect mm -hmm. that is not good right. so that we're all really on the same page communicating about what's best for, mm -hmm. for the cat. Last season um, it was brought up, suggested to keep a pet diary and I think that's such a great thing to add into as right. a pet parent because then you see the pattern especially with cats Absolutely. which if the symptoms are more elusive then you are ne you now have a chronicling and and you can better communicate with your veterinarian if you want to try something that's integrative or holistic you you now have some other inf information to draw on right. so. and with cell phones that makes it even easier I can't tell you how many videos I watch uh, in practice. Oh, uh, okay. People come Fantastic in. Tool. This is what happened at home. Oh, and, great! Uh, which is much different than how they're acting at the pr uh, practice mm -hmm. because all the the uh, epinephrine is going in their body and they're not acting mm -hmm. abnormal whatsoever. Yeah. Right. 
And a video is just a wonderful yes, tool because uh, uh, our perception of how a cat might be acting may be very different than, yeah. than the reality of it. And so if we're all looking at the same video together to interpret Absolutely. the behavior and the clinical signs, it's a, it's a marvelous tool. Well, folks, as you can see, there is a lot of great information that we're going to be sharing throughout this season. I hope you've picked up a few great tips. And I'd be remiss not to remind you, get that pet journal started right away if you haven't already done it. Thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on Natural Pets TV. We wanna keep the conversation going in the comment section down below, or you can always reach out to us at PetWorldInsider.com. You can get more information from our great guests by reaching out to them as well. Heidi Nevela at NaturaPetsWithAZ.com, Dr. Liz Bale at NoBullCat.com, and Dr. Ken Tudor at WellDogPlace.com. Let's keep this going. Let us know what you want to be talking about, what you want to hear from us. Thanks again for joining us, and don't forget to hit that like button.